You need more. I'm like Tom Cruise in that one movie. You know where he's like, oh, Mission Impossible. Yeah. That's how he gets the. Yeah, that's how he gets the bomb to defuse. Yeah. yeah. Hello. May I do six Doritos Locos Tacos Supremes? Okay. And then one quesalupa with seasoned beef. And then can I do um, two Baja Blast freezes? Sure, would you like those regular or large? Oh, large. And that, I think that should do it. Would you like any hot sauce? Oh, plenty of fire sauce and mild sauce for the boy. What? <laughs> Thank you, I love you. <laughs> Hey Josh, I found a hot sauce packet for us, besties. Or besties, and they put the mild sauce in there for the boy. Trevor's got a sense of tummy. Okay, you want a taco? Yeah, give me a taco. The colors of this taco are absolutely gorgeous. The Doritos Logos Taco, a marvel, a modern marvel. It set the tone for so many other things in the world. Like when you think about real pioneers of science, Taco Bell, Isaac mm. Newton. Taco Bell, it's been too long, man. This is really good. Not only did you get all the Dorito flavor from the powder, Yeah. You get the Dorito texture. I mean, this is just a really good taco. It's like the it, the cheese Dorito shell isn't overpowering, you know? Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste like I'm eating Doritos. How do you think we're gonna fence by this, Josh? I wanna get some really nice cut of Wagyu, like something with some connective tissue that we can braise for a while. Yeah. I actually have something special that I got for you. They're called Chikatana ants. Oh! Yeah. Very seasonal delicacy in Mexico, really delicious flavor. And then of course we gotta, I mean, we gotta use some really dope, awesome masa to make our own Doritos Loco shell. And then of course we gotta use some awesome cheese, dehydrate yeah. it, try and make that powder. They've done it, they've mastered it. And now we gotta see if we can do it even better. Taco Bell, we're coming for you. Not really, we love you. We'd love to work with you. Taco Bell, hit us up. But yeah. email a man named Flanagan. The Taco Bell. I drooled on myself. Trevor, it's about 200 degrees in here. You feeling that? Yeah, it's 200 degrees in here. And also normally after I eat Taco Bell, I usually like take a nap. So I'm struggling a bit, but I'm ready to cook. All right, so right now we're working on the meat right now. We've done yeah. Taco Bell meat a couple times. We've done it like barbacoa style. You know, we made some braises, but I want to do something a little bit different. So we're gonna like finally chop this Wagyu hanger steak right here. Hanger steak is the muscle in the cow that is essentially like vestigial, which is yeah. why it gets such incredible marbling like that. Ooh. Yeah, it's incredible, right? Can't believe I caught a hanger. <laughs> what? What is that? You, you, uh, you know this. You I don't know, know this. It. Is it SpongeBob? Oh, Mike, I can't believe I caught a hanger. Oh, it's from like like Rounders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've it's never seen Rounders. I only cops. know your John Malkovich impersonation oh, from Rounders. You only know Teddy KGB. Yeah, no, that was Edward Norton, Worm. I'm sorry, that's not even a Gen Z thing. That's just, I should watch Rounders. All right, so we're gonna take this hanger steak and we're gonna dice it up. We're making something essentially called uh, like picado de bistec, okay. which is more of like a Tex-Mex thing. And a lot of people think Taco Bell is Tex-Mex, even though it's not actually Tex-Mex. It was started in Downey, California, yeah. but it's like an Americanized version of Mexican food. So we figured we would make, you know, a somewhat Americanized version of a like finely chopped beef dish. So we're gonna chop this up and get it in a we're, pan. We're gonna do it. Well, we're hold gonna... on, you explain the rest of the ingredients, man. Here we have uh, a various spices, uh, which you've probably seen before, not too much fancy. Fancy about them. The purple potatoes, hailing from somewhere where they grew. Maybe up. in you know, I, Ida, perhaps. Uh, I was looking at the purple potatoes, actually. They look so funky and they are almost shiny. And I told Nicole, I was like, if you told me this was some like weird animal's testicles, I'd probably just believe you. Do people often walk up to you talking about animal testicles? Because they kind of do to me. Yeah. Actually, like I don't get recognized in public often because it's kind of a niche thing. Thank you all for being here. I mean, it's a big niche, but you know what I'm saying. I'm not like a real famous person, but occasionally people will recognize you and someone will be like, hey, you got any animal testicles in your, the trunk of your Nissan? I'm like, no, sir, I'm, I'm just like to buy liquor at Smart and Final. Please let me do that. They have great prices. All right, this is another really cool thing. It's called Sal de Gusano. It is actually ground dried uh, agave worms from the mage plant. We're seasoning all the meat with that. They're just gonna gradually stir this around. Trevor, you wanna start adding some veg to this pot? What do you want first, shishito? Yeah, get some shishito peppers in there. Typically you'd use like bell peppers or something, but we're gonna be using shishitos How instead. How many would you like? You know a fun fact that every server will tell you if you order shishito peppers, about one in every 10 shishito peppers, Nicole's nod and she knows it's spicy, so watch out. Is that? Really? That's a real thing though. Wait, yeah, that's yeah. a real Occasionally thing? Occasionally we get a spicy one, but okay. otherwise they're just flavorful. Because sometimes I order shishito peppers and then I'll eat them and out of nowhere, I just get one. I'm like, Palm, heel, palm heel strike those. All the way over there? Yeah. Okay, I got one. I kind of, it's- <laughs> We got one usable one. Okay, so I'm adding shallots. I'm adding onions into this. This is just to sort of like add aromatics to the stew. We got garlic going in there. We got all that salad de gusano. We're gonna get potatoes in there. Potatoes are just gonna give it some awesome, lovely sort of mouthfeel in there. We're gonna let this braise for a while. Now we gotta start seasoning it up. We got a bunch of chili powders. We got some, Pasilla chili powder right here. 
Uh, Pasilla is gonna be a lot milder, but give you a lot of that dark, dusky chili heat. It's gonna dumpy dumpy that. This is ghost pepper. We're just, I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna do it. I told Nicole that I wanted to do it. Now I don't wanna do you it. You wanna do this one? <laughs> this is mirage pepper from Turkey. We're just gonna try and like get a lot of things in there because Taco Bell's beef is so, so, so highly seasoned with like a bunch of stuff. And Taco Bell actually does fly in spice all around the world. This is Chipotle. Sure, you keep putting the bottles over there, but I have the lids over here and it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Deal with it! What do I this do with the lid? Come to deal with it. We got a little bit of espalette pepper. Uh, this is from France. Yeah, a little bit of bittersweet paprika. Smell that. This is actually really sort of heady Ooh. aroma. Yeah, you're gonna get wow. a ton of smoke off of this. That's gonna be really Super fantastic. Super smoky. Especially with that mogwai salt in there. And we get the Bobby Flay peppers. <laughs> get the Bobby Flay Calabrian chili peppers. We're literally putting like nine different countries chili peppers in this. Add a little bit of tomato paste into this. Do you think I could, if I squeeze it really hard from here, I could launch it in there? Try it, try and boop the tomato paste. Okay, I'm gonna like smack it. I think it was the right idea. You had cartoon physics in your mind. It's where like you the toothpaste, it, yeah. like someone steps on the toothpaste and goes Yeah, yeah, yeah. like if you see a banana peel on the ground, or you're just like, oh, someone's about to die. I have to, tomato paste on my hand. A little bit more tomato paste, double hair. that tomato paste. Okay. Yeah, right in the I center, I like to toast it. I think there's tomato paste in my hair. Oh, oh, I'm a squirter. You're a what? What? You need a quarter? <laughs> yeah, I need a quarter. Trevor needs a quarter. Can there's... anyone get Trevor a quarter? All right, Trevor, give this a try. <laughs> Ooh. So this is called huitlacoche. Uh, huitlacoche, they'll also refer to it as like Mexican truffles because it is a fungus that grows on the outside of corn. Yeah. Uh, oh. Really freaking fantastic in a quesadilla. If you go down to Silver Lake, uh, there's a woman who makes quesadillas I don't with the huitlacoche. My home. Yeah. Well, eventually, one day, you haven't been 21. The pandemic took away his 21st birthday and that's one of the many, many tragedies, I would yeah. say. All right, so yeah, we're gonna yeah. get some of the super awesome earthy wheat lacoche in there and then stir that up. And we're just gonna continue to build layers of flavor. Trevor, can you crack open this beer? Can I enjoy your first beer with you? Yeah, first ever beer. <laughs> Uh, really freaking awesome craft brewery out of Mexico. It's called Monstro de Agua. Uh, it's a dude who is making beer in like the foothills of Mexico City. Yeah. This one is brewed with prickly pear or choconosle uh, and also a little bit of lemon balm. So it should get, can I drink this or no? Wait. Can't even take a sip. Can I run off camera? I think I left something over here. What, Trevor, That's so no. weird. Nicole, it, put that, Nicole, take that out Nicole. of your mouth. Trevor, you gotta wrestle it from Nicole's mouth. Mm. Some of that beer in there. You should get a lot of like super nice light flavors. All we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of stock oh, just to offset for the water loss. And then we're gonna let this cook for like maybe two hours, just like kind of continue to slowly, slowly reduce it mm. until the beef starts to break apart. I'm really excited about that. I gotta say, I'm really, I'm, 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 uh, I'm really excited. Uh, we're, we're making our, our crema essentially right now. This is crema mexicana. It's not as sour and stodgy as like sour cream from Nudsen or Daisy or whatever, but we're gonna create our sour cream to go on these taco supremes. Good. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make really awesome chicatana ant salsa. So chicatana ants, they're these flying ants that are super, super thick. Woo! You can see them right here. They got these thick little abdomens oh, and they're dang. only in season for like a couple days a year. They're a big thing in Oaxacan cooking. Do you want me to save one? Just pop a couple. Okay. Super nutty. That's super nutty. really good. It's almost like when you have like a, you know, like a peanut. It's got this like lovely, sweet, earthy, nutty flavor. So we're gonna toast those up and then we're gonna get them into a mocajete okay. with chili de arbol. Those have simply been soaked. So we're gonna add some avocado leaves to that. Can you add some hoja santa and the chili de arbol to the mocajete? How many uh, the chili de arbol? Uh, like a fair amount, just like a mini handful, like three times that. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. And then we're going to mash that into a salsa uh, with these chicatana ants Ooh. and the avocado leaves. Uh, so this is salted chapulín. It is salt that is made with roasted and dried uh, crickets, Ooh. which are a really awesome bar snack. Huge fan of just drinking some micheladas and eating those, this almost like skin on shell on shrimp. I like to get it broken up and then you get the circular motion. Oh God, I got it on my sweater. Yeah, dude, we're splashing this all over, man. But the good news is it's just bugs and chilies. All right. So we've made really lovely chili and chicatana ant paste right here. Make it nice and rustic. And then we're just gonna stir this into our crema and this should really, really flavor that all throughout. I mean, you've seen, yeah. how like, well, doesn't this look like the chipotle aioli? I tell you what, that Taco crema Bell. is gonna make me crema. <laughs> this is fiery and earthy. Ooh. Add a tiny bit of salt to this. This got, <laughs> Trevor, this has flavor out the wazoo. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm mm. sweating. You getting the tingles? Yeah, no, I'm hot. I uh, shouldn't have wore this sweater. I'm tingling. I'm gonna take off my shirt. Yo, yo, can I take? I'm gonna take off my shirt. Can Derek, I take off your shirt. <laughs> the apron. It's an order. The apron will cover the nipples. Yeah, oh, like, okay. Is it okay if I take off my? Yeah, I got chili in my eyes and I'm sweating. <laughs> Trevor, we have certainly made Dorito powder before. Yeah. We've never made fancy Dorito powder. So okay. what we're doing? We're doing a double Gloucestershire cheddar. Oh. Right here. This got some chive in it. Take a taste of that. Okay. 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 Mm. It is pretty chivey. I'm excited to try and get some of those flavors in there. And this is a Gouda from Laden in the Netherlands. It's got a whole cumin seed in it. So cumin is a big flavor. 
Oh, yeah, and this one tastes like farts. Tastes a little like farts. The cumin seed really perfumes the cheese, but Taco Bell gives you farts. Cheese thing. tastes like farts, huh? How they taste together. You mash some cheeses in your mouth? Wow. So what we've done is we've dehydrated these cheeses, and then we've tried to blot the oil. It's not super hard, try it. Okay. It tastes like when you, you know, you get a cheese little crunchy on the bottom of something that you bake wow. with cheese. So we're gonna add the dehydrated cheese to the spice grinder, and then we have our normal Dorito mixture here. You got your salt, got your garlic, your onion, your paprika, your cheddar cheese powder. I'm gonna add that to it. So this little powder is maltodextrin right here. It is a tapioca starch that soaks up fats. Let's try to buzz it up, see what happens. It's going. It's making it into a powder. Yes. Let's take it off. Okay, it's still a little thick, but I mean, give it a taste. I mean, that's fancy cheese powder. Wow. So this is gonna be our fancy cheese powder to go on the outside of the Dorito Loco shell that we're about to make. And we're gonna save some of it and mix it into the masa to make our tortillas. Okay. Add some more things, add some of that mirage pepper in there. We're gonna add some of that sal de gusano. These both? Then we're gonna add our little cheddar Dorito mixer just so it's nice and orange. Yo, this is so cool. Wait, this is that uh, that salt, that special salt, the French stuff. <laughs> Tell them, not me. Uh, it's really cool. The salt crystallizes in strands. So normally when you have like, you have like little salt chunks, but this salt crystallizes in like little fine strands and it's really neat and it looks cool, almost like little like pulled sugar. And we're gonna take some of these whole little pepper berries. These look like little bombs that got the sticks on them. Yeah. These are super, super cool too. We're Throw gonna try and jazz up the spices. See if it pops. Throw one on the ground. Ah, ah! jeez, God. I, I did the Look. thing in the wee bowling when you throw the ball backwards and then everybody behind you goes, whoa! You're old enough to remember wee bowling? This feels right to me to shake it. You need more. I'm like Tom Cruise in that one movie. You know where he's like, oh, Mission Impossible. Yeah. It gets the... Yeah, that's how he gets the bomb to defuse. Yeah, yeah. Mission Impossible. Let's give that a little taste. Gosh, that's good. That's so good. That's fancy Dorito powder. Next! Get it out of here! Next man up! Next. We're ready to crush it! We're all whacked out on chilies and chikatana ants, man. Woo! Trevor, this is a really special moment in Mythical Kitchen history. Yes. This is, might be the first time we have ever made a salad. Come on, oh, give it up, up. Here we go! Up. Mythical Kitchen, make salad. a salad! We got fresh vegetables in the house! So we're using cactus paddles, aka nopales. Ooh. These are really fantastic ingredients. Some people say they don't like the slime in them. You know, they have a little bit of that kind of like okra, um, unctuous texture to it. I am a huge, huge fan, so I'm gonna start prepping these. Trevor, you're gonna make a tamarind and lime vinaigrette right here, so... That's fresh tamarind. Technically, it's a legume. It's used in a lot of candies. It's really fantastic. I'm just gonna scrape my knife, make sure there are no spines on the end of this. So we cracked open a bunch of these, pulled the bean part out, pulled the pulp off, and then we soaked them so yeah. the paste is gonna be easier to get off. Yeah, I'm just gonna Jeez, boil sure. off the cactus paddles for about eight minutes just to really soften them. You could grill them. I mean, they're really fantastic grilled, but I, I just wanna poach them. I wanna keep all the spring fresh brightness in here. Hey, speaking of speaking of spring, we got some Easter egg radishes. We got some cool colors on the outside. Uh, I think I'm just gonna toss the radishes in hole. Maybe I'm gonna cut these in half. There's gotta be a better way to do this. I feel like an idiot right now, but I'm just gonna keep doing it because yeah, it's all yeah, yeah. I know. You wanna try something cool though? Yeah. So this is a black radish. You can see the outside, this is actually a winter radish, which means it's gonna be a lot sturdier. Most people will just cook with this or grate it raw, but I really mm. like the toothsome texture of it. And it's got this like super funky, almost like acridity to it that yeah. I'm a huge fan of that. I think is really gonna round it out. So it's I'm just gonna- It's pretty earthy. It's really earthy. It's very nice. So I'm just gonna julienne it and I'm gonna get it in there. I'm sticky. Yeah, dude, welcome to life in the mythical kitchen. Other vegetables we got going in the salad. Uh, Taco Bell uses iceberg lettuce. What's fancy than iceberg lettuce? Little endive. And again, we're working with such big, bold flavors in all of this mm -hmm. that I really want to get something that can like stand up to all that. From the Belgian region of Europe. <laughs> it's true. All right, so we got all the endive, all the radishes in there. I'm just gonna get some fresh herbs in there. Whatever, I don't like to pick my herbs too heavily, man. Get yeah. some stem in there. The stems have a ton of flavor. Okay, Josh, I'm really not making a lot of headway here. Do you think this is enough? That's enough, you did no, your best. I, no, I want to do, I want to make it good. Okay, Let's everything that we've made. In my mind, this was gonna work. In my mind, this was gonna like get all the seeds well, out. Well, now you're sticky. Naturally, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all, we're all sticky, man. What are you doing? <laughs> Squeeze that lime in I there. thought that was my job. Why are you, what the, what the hell? Yeah, you gotta pulverize the lime to get the juice out. Yeah, but just roll it around like a normal person. Why are you But no, it? bro, I'm a striker. I'm not a ground gamer, all right? Some people wanna roll around with the lime on the ground, just, getting its guard. No, no, I'm here and I'm striking. Just punched a lime and is trying to like explain yeah, look it how, to Yeah, look how juicy it is. Put some salt in there, get some salt in there. I don't wanna get sticky on it. some cactus for my sticky hand. Oh, <laughs> you just licked me. Frick, it went into the salad. Well, that's where it was going anyways. I yeah, but it, it got on my tongue. Mm -hmm. That's nice, good. Right? We're good. Just, just, <laughs> <laughs> just, Trevor, open ah! it. Open it. Ah! Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna julienne. Why would you do I'm that? I'm gonna do julienne these. Get them in nice long strips. That's I'm what I go love. Home, Josh. You all said to go home. I'm gonna actually go home. I'll get my 2005 Mini Cooper. I'll drive thing. home and I'll get my shower Yo, and I'll wash this all off. 
Ah! I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. You got it. No, it's perfect. That's what we wanted to happen. I'm just gonna finish julienning up these nopales. Okay, it's already in the. Just whisk. Oh, I got it off though. Just whisk it. Whisk no! Ah! Let me stab it. Didn't we? Is this the thing that we were using the whole time? <laughs> I don't know. It's sticking. I, I thought it was. Did you grab to me. A, an unopened I one? don't know. We have so many jars on that dang shelf. I'm gonna have to take a shower Too in the many sink dang after jars. this, like you. We got just, just scrud everywhere. How many beans did I'm you just, get? I'm doing my How knife work. How many beans did you I'm put in I'm doing my knife work. It's a bone-in vinaigrette. It's rustic. <laughs> you got so many freaking beans in here. Yeah, well, hold on. So <laughs> I can't open. Oh, God. It was going Another so jar. well, and it all broke down as soon as we had to make a salad. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we ever made a salad <laughs> Mythical Kitchen, everybody. <laughs> Clap it up. <laughs> Trevor and I have somehow become covered in sticky. All right, um, okay, wait, wait, wait. We got to add the oil for the vinaigrette. This is Salsa Negra from Chef Carlos Salgado at Taco Marie. Fantastic freaking restaurant. We're gonna use that as the oil in our vinaigrette. It's an oil-based salsa. Yeah. I'm gonna And then we're also gonna put that on our tacos. I'm gonna passive aggressively count the number of beans Dude, I take just, out of here. No, just whisk it, man. Wait, wait, I think we need some like I'm gonna put some water in it. <laughs> Trevor, this vinaigrette looks absolutely awesome. We got these nopales cooling right here. All we have to do is add the vinaigrette while Trevor screams at me fishing out the, the beans. And then we're gonna add the nopales, and then that's our salad. High five. Oh, we did it, man. Trevor, we've done the taco portion. Of course we have. We've done the locos portion. Yeah. Now we gotta do the Doritos thing. Uh, yeah. Portion? Yeah, it's never a good beat. <laughs> We're making the tortillas from scratch. We're using Masienda Masa. It's a local LA company. They make fan freaking fantastic tortillas. Doritos, when they make their Doritos, they're frying raw masa. They aren't doing tortillas. That's why it gets so light and crispy, because the oil gets in there. So we're gonna make essentially these raw masa rounds. We're gonna cut it out with this little ring mold, yeah. and then we're gonna fry it in our little taco shapers. Okay. All right, so can you slowly stream in that warm water to the masa? Yeah. And I'm just gonna mix it with my hands. I mean, we've got a great record for making tacos. Taco yeah, we shells. do, dude. I mean, we, Volcano we've taco. Ne we've never screwed up taco shells before. All right, Trevor, so we got some of that water mixed in, so we're gonna take yeah. some orange food dye, because oh. we're really trying to recreate the look of these Locos tacos, and we got the fancy cheese powder to add after. But right now, we're just doing the cheddar cheese and the orange food dye. I keep adding water, I'm just gonna keep mashing. Okay. And we're making these tacos kind of smaller, which is the first time ever on fancy fast food that we have made a dish smaller than the original. Yeah. But we're gonna make like 15 of them, and then we're not gonna leave here till we've eaten all of them. Well, hors d'oeuvres are fancy. Horses ovaries is what my father called them. It's a regional name, <laughs> Allentown, PA, represent. Yeah. We're gonna let the masa say it, and then we're gonna roll it out. Then we're gonna put it in these. And <laughs> you get that from? My uh, pouch. The tacos were shaping. Yeah, you little known fact, I'm a marsupial. The masa's been sitting. Yeah. Uh, it's got the cheddar in there, it's got all the orange food dice. So now we're gonna do, we're just gonna roll out the masa. So yeah. I got, <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, can you take, well, I'll, I'll just do it. You're just whole, you got your thing We to have do. the infamous taco shaper. Tell them about the taco shaper, Trevor. So Josh and I once did an episode where we recreated Taco Bell's Lava Taco. And in order to make that, we had to make our own very, very red taco shells. And we bought this contraption on the Amazon.com because we thought, wow, that's so easy, so intuitive to make a taco shell. You put the thing in here, you put it in here, drop it in the fryer and boom, it's fried. Little did we know, when when the taco shell fried up, the indentation would puff out through the taco shaper letters, and then taco shaper would be imprinted on our taco shell. And imprinted into your lives forever. Yes, uh, so we were eating taco shaper brand taco shells, homemade for our Taco Bell episode. So I don't know, I mean, maybe since they're mini, it won't do the same thing. Uh, but who knows, in about five to seven minutes, we might have more taco shaper tacos. Did you, how are you doing over there? I did it. Well, great. So I'm gonna take a ring mold, cut it out again. We're going for slightly smaller tacos here. Just lift this up. Is it too wet? No, you're too wet. All right, Trevor, we're gonna fold this in half, pop it in there. Not to be insubordinate, but that looks like crap. <laughs> you can't just say, you, that was insubordinate. <laughs> okay, my bad. Say something positive. Josh, you're so handsome <laughs> and you. good at cooking, and I'm just really proud of you Thanks, and what you've man. done. You know, what? Try. you know, up into the salad, we were doing some really cool things. <laughs> And then, you know, the wheels have come off the train a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we're still pushing through, and I think it's gonna be really good once we're done. So, we're gonna load this on here, and we're gonna fry them, and then right out of the fryer, we're gonna dust it in our fancy Dorito powder. Sheesh! Trevor taught me that one. Off we go. Bye, tacos. Trevor, go ahead. You're gonna pull those taco shells here. Ah! We'll, 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 like, put that whole thing on a rack, I guess. <laughs> over the. You just dump it. You realize you put the rack over the dough. Yeah. How do you just. 
Yeah. Can lift it up. All right, so right when these are hot out of fire, Trevor, dust them with the <laughs> dust them with the Rito powder. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna dust through that. Oh, it is. Nicole, it's working. Nicole, 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 it's working. Okay, that looks awesome. Now one more. Trevor, crevasse my powders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, 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 keep going. Keep going. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Jumble, 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 jumble. And scene. Okay. We got it, this is really hot. Trevor, we got all of our fancy components here. So yeah, we got our awesome Gouda and double Gloucestershire Dorito Locos taco shells right here. Mm -hmm. We got the double Gloucestershire cheddar shredded to go on top. We got that Chikatana ant garlic chili to arbol crema. And we got this little steak picado to give this a bite. Mm -hmm. This stuff, I was you know, snacking off camera. Mm -hmm. Unbelievably flavorful. So the way this goes, I'm gonna go beef. I'm the beef boy right now. You're okay. a cream man, Trevor. You've always been a cream man. Yeah, you're I'm gonna follow cream me man. with cream. All right, let's get a little pocket of beef. I'm trying to weight it to the middle. How much cream are we thinking? Uh, that's a good amount. That's a good amount. Try not to cover the beef okay, and cream. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll get more of a drizzle yeah, okay. action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Freaking beans, Josh. Ah, beans on toast. People rip on the British for beans on toast. That's a good food in my book. Beans on toast? You donut! What are you doing? All right. That's how they sound to me. <laughs> Bark like seals. You think I could out Gordon Gordon? I think so, dude. Whenever he reacts to our TikToks, he's like, oh, co oh, oh, come on. Josh, yo, oh, Josh, oh, 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 oh come no. on, big boy, oh, oh no. Oh, oh, come oh, on, man. Oh. All right, I'm just gonna follow with a little bit of the salad. Uh, is cheese after uh, salad? Cheese comes after salad, cheese and tomato. So I'm just gonna put a little dollop of the salad. We've loaded in a lot of stuff into these miniature tacos. These are tiny little tacos. Very small, not a lot of Very room small. to work with. Not a lot of room to work. The beef is really good, so I think Josh wanted to go really heavy on the beef. That is correct. But I mean, the salad, we, we got that beautiful vinaigrette in there. Yeah. Put some maters on there. Well, yeah, you do that. I, okay. I, I, Use your hands for the maters. Okay, and it's mater. Yeah. It's like toe mater. From uh, Cars. Yeah, with uh, Larry the Cable Guy. We have Chikatana Ant Chili Crisp from Chef Carlos Salgado at Taco Maria, and I'm pretty stoked on this. That's epic. So these are those same Chikatana Ants that are ground up with a bunch of chilies and garlic to mimic like a Sichuan Chili Crisp, like Lao Gan Ma. Whee! You know who loves Lao Gan Ma? Oh, John Cena. John Cena loves Lao Gan Ma. Oh, you know who else loves Lao Gan Ma? You. Me. We have a Doritos Locos Tacos made, Trevor. Yes. Yeah. Just to remind ourselves of what a taco looks like. I'm still excited about this. I am still excited about this too. So these are the original Doritos Locos Tacos. Theirs is a lot paler than ours. Also, so, it's had some time to steam. Yeah, this this hard taco. Turn to soft taco. Wait, Trevor. So if you see ours for the first time in fancy fast food history are significantly smaller than Taco Bell's, but I think this is a much more compact bite, and we certainly packed a lot more flavor in there. All right, Trevor, take a bite of this. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. The taco shell has formed with the beef. <laughs> it's one coagulant. It's nice though. A nice paste. Oh, like a dumpling. That's such a good taco. <laughs> what the? <laughs> I'm excited about right. this. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, oh, heck yes, friend. Mm. The flavor comes in waves. It's so layered and there's so much going on. First thing it hits you, Chikatana Ant Chili Crisp because it tastes like freaking Lao Gan Ma. Mm. The steak piccato that we made, yeah. all the earthiness from the Wheelit Koche in there. I mean, honestly, the salad's really nice. Yeah, it's a almost, lot of acid. It's almost like the beef is just like accented so perfectly by everything else. It's like you get yeah. the base beef and then mm -hmm. every other ingredient in there is just adding to it. Like the crema, so good, a little bit of spice and it's just like so smooth and silky. Oh, I'm being real, the crema is an unsung hero because you're not just, it's not like a reprieve. Like you don't get refreshed from sour cream. Like this hits you with even more flavor because of all that raw garlic. Before I eat another one though, mm -hmm. how much did this cost? <laughs> so we're pricing this out as an eight taco party pack. That's how we buy tacos from Taco Bell. Eight of these, I mean, you $239.21. For eight? God dang, good job, Holy brother. Holy frick. Thanks so much for stopping by the Milk Kitchen. We got new episodes every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, Hot Dogs and Sandwich out every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcast. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, under pictures of your mythical dishes, and I shape pictures of dreams become food. Woo! Oh That's spicy. And please go fill out the mythical census. Let us know what you think of the show, what you want to see more of. Uh, tell me that you hate me if you really want to. It's as long as you fill out the census. We got a link in the description. Golly, Trevor. Yeah, you want to go nap somewhere? Yeah, I'm sleeping. Okay. I need to sleep. Yeah. Get as messy as you want in your own kitchen when you have the Mythical Kitchen Towel. Available now at mythical.com.